so today we will start with module 3 of our syllabus which is assembler right so what is an assembler as we have already discussed an assembler is a low level machine dependent program so the assembly language for every machine architecture is a dependence only on that machine architecture itself right so it's a low level language what does it do it accepts some assembly language code as input and it produces the corresponding machine language equivalent which is in binary which is in zeros and ones that is the output it also produces some information that is useful for the loader because the loader needs to be executing the program the machine language code right so the block diagram of assembler can be shown as this where there is an assembler which is working using some databases as an input to the assembler we can send the assembly language program itself and the output from the assembler is a machine language and some other information that the loader will use while executing the program fine so this block diagram of the assembler is very important for us along with the definition of an assembler now for designing any system software there is a general design procedure that we follow now this uh, design procedure for a system software can be broken down into a number of steps so there are six steps which are generally followed these steps are specify the problem statement then we need to specify the data structure that we will use for solving the problem then we need to define the format of each of those data structures what type of data they will contain what will be the size of each data and so on then we need to specify or decide on an algorithm that we, we will use right then we need to look for modularity that is parts of the program or parts of the solution that we can reuse that can be reused and then we will repeat these steps time and again as long as the whole problem is not solved so these are the uh, general design procedure steps for designing any system software moving on we have the design specifications particularly for an assembler so the first step in designing an assembler is to determine the statement of the problem so what we'll do now is we will take a sample problem in assembly language and we will try to go through it step by step pretending to be the assembler itself so we will try to translate the given problem uh, using the concepts of an assembler right so before we start doing that there is a simple note we need to follow there are two types of instructions that the assembler takes as input one type of instruction is a pseudo op it is known as a pseudo op what is it it is an instruction which is specified for the operation of the assembler so it's a assembly language instruction that specifies an operation of the assembler itself a pseudo op is an operation that the assembler needs to perform then we come to the machine op a machine op represents a machine instruction that needs to be translated by the assembler right okay <coughs> excuse me now understanding the input so the figure on the left in the following slide there will be a figure on the left it will be constant right so the figure on the left gives us a series of instructions which form a program so the first instruction is john start and zero now this instruction is provided as input to the assembler now what will the assembler do when it gets this instruction the assembler will determine that start 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 is a pseudo op instruction it it denotes that the program is starting here right john is the name of the program john is the name that the user has given to the program this name is passed on to the loader which we will study later right and this zero has some specific meaning so zero means that the instructions will be stored starting at relative memory location zero so this start is the first instruction and these uh, instructions whatever the instructions will be in the program they will be started with relative memory location zero right so the next instruction we come to is using star comma 16 now using is another pseudo op instruction what does it do it tells us that register 15 is to be used as the base register so if you remember from the previous lectures we have been using an offset value, a index value and a base register value. 
so this using statement tells us that register 15 is to be used as the base register now at execute in time register 15 will hold the address of the first instruction again register 15 will hold the address of the first instruction at execution time now star or the asterisk mark it tells us to use the address stored in register 15 so to sum up using star 15 tells the assembler that this sudo of instruction is telling you register 15 is to be used as the base register it will be storing the address of the first instruction during execution time right okay the next instruction is l1 comma 5 now we already know that l denotes the load instruction that means we need to load the content of location mentioned by 5 five in register 1 now we can look up the bit configuration of instruction L in a mnemonic table and we can replace the machine language instruction in place of L. That is what the assembler would do. But that is not the main problem here. The main problem is we need the address which is stated by FIVE5. But this address is not available at this point. At this point we don't know what address 5 is pointing to. Again no index register is used so we can uh, decide that the index value is 0 offset is missing which will be equal to the difference between the location 5 and the location of the beginning of the program now let us recap about a previous concept we already know that the absolute address location of any value in memory is equal to the offset value plus the content of the base register right now the base register content will be initialized at runtime in register 15 and we don't know the offset right now because location 5 does not have any meaning for us at this point. What we already know is that register 15 is the base and it points to the beginning. Now since instructions start at relative address location 0, the relative location for this load instruction is set to 0. The location counter is now incremented by 4 as the load instruction takes up 4 bytes of memory. So if we want to make some sense of this input L1, 5, we get a translated form which is L1, blank 0, 15 at relative address 0. Right? This blank will be replaced by the offset when we can get a meaning of what the offset will actually be. The offset will be the value which is pointed to by this name 5 F I V E. 15 is the base register and obviously 0 is the index register because no index is mentioned. Moving forward we have a next instruction which is A1,4. A is again a add instruction. This also we have known previously. Right. So we have to add the content of location 4 with the content in register 1 fine for this we can again look up the bit configuration of instruction a in the mnemonic table and replace it that is not a problem here the problem again similar to the previous step is that we need the address of 4 which is not available at this point again no index register is used so the index values is taken as 0 relative address for this location is 4 Location counter after this instruction will be incremented by 4 because the add instruction takes up 4 bytes of memory. The translated form for this instruction is A1 blank 0, 15 at relative address 4. So A is for add, 1 is the register number, blank will be replaced again by the offset as in the previous instruction. There is no index, so index register is 0 and base register is 15. Okay, moving on, we have another instruction which is st1, temp. st is a stored instruction. We need to store the content of register 1 at a location which is mentioned by temp. We need to store the content of register 1 at a location which is mentioned by temp. Again, for st, we can look up the instruction in mnemonic table and replace the machine language instruction in the proper place that is not a problem for us what is the problem the problem is that we need the address of temp which is not available right now no index register is used and the relative address for this instruction in memory is 8 
right because the load instruction started from 0 to 4 the add instruction started from 4 to 8 so relative address for this instruction is 8 so location counter is now incremented to a value of 12 right so the translated form for this specific instruction is st1 comma blank 0 comma 15 which is at a relative address location 8 this blank will be replaced by the offset when we get to know what the offset actually is so we are done with the first three instructions l1 comma 5 a1 comma 4 st1 comma temp moving on we have a new type of instruction which is 4 dc s4 now we have to understand what this instruction actually tells us dc stands for define constant it's a pseudo op instruction it tells us to define some data what data do we define in this case we define a full word which is mentioned by this f we define a full word a full word takes up four bytes we define a full word called four so the full word will be named four and whenever we refer to this four it will produce a value 4 right so this statement tells us that we need to define a constant value using DC command we need to define a constant value which has the name 4 and which will produce the value in numeric 4 right the current value of location counter is 12 so this pseudo of instruction has the address 12 so symbol 4 we can say this symbol 4 has the address 12 so the translated form is symbol 4 is at relative location 12 fine if you have any problem please go through these slides once again i'm sure you will get them coming to the next one it is similar we have 5 dc f5 here again dc means define constant it is nothing but a pseudo op instruction it tells us to define some data in this case we define a full word which is noted by f we define a full word which is called 5 which has the name 5 and it will produce a value 5 right the current value of location counter is 16 so this pseudo op instruction has the relative address 16 so we can say that the translation is the value 5 will be stored at relative location 16 right moving on we have temp ds 1f now dc was defined constant ds stands for define storage it is nothing but another pseudo of instruction it tells us to define some storage space for whom do we define the storage space in this case we need to define the space for one full word one f one full word and that storage space will be known as temp now the current value of the location counter is 20 right because the previous one had 16 plus 4 which gives us 20 for this instruction so the current value of location counter is 20 so this pseudo op instruction has relative address 20 so what we can say we can say that label temp has an associated value of 20 the translation remains temp is at relative location 20 right okay the next one and the last one is end so end is another pseudo op instruction which tells us that we have reached the last instruction now if you remember we have been translating all of these instructions to generate another form so after going through all the previous steps we have generated an intermediate form right so the intermediate form after pass one looks like this so if you want to correlate you can simply pause the slide pause uh, at this point and go through the previous slides you will see that we have been generating these intermediate forms so at relative address 0 we have a mnemonic instruction l1 blank 0 comma 15 at 4 we have a1 blank 0 comma 15 and at 8 we have st1 blank 0 comma 15 at address 12 we have a value 4 which was determined using a dc dc4 produced a value 4 at address 12 dc5 produced a 5 at address 16 and at relative location 20 there was a temp value there was a temp value a name called temp which told us to reserve space for one full word right so this is the intermediate form after first pass this is known as the first pass so during translation we have encountered some symbols which were 4 5 and temp 
they did not have any special meaning in the instruction where they were used they have been defined later in the program this problem we have discussed earlier in the lecture about module 1 where we had learned that symbols can appear before they are defined and that was known as the forward reference problem so in this pass in this first pass only the symbols are defined and their relative locations the relative locations of each instruction is determined right using this intermediate form we will move on to pass 2 so in the second pass we will fill in the offsets we had left blank in the load add and store instructions the goal is to generate instructions and addresses right so let's check it out the value 5 produced by label 5 has a relative location 16 let's see the source program said that a value 5 used the gc pseudo op and it started at a relative location 16 right so the load instruction at the relative location 0 will now become what it was initially l1 comma 5 we translated that in the first pass to l1 comma blank 0 comma 15 now this blank was to be referred to by the value of 5 now 5 currently has a relative location value of 16 so we will replace 16 in the blank so the instruction becomes l1 comma 16 0 comma 15 similarly at relative location 4 the instruction a is a1 comma blank 0 comma 15 right in the source program it was a1 comma 4 and 4 we have seen after pass pass 1 that 4 is stored at relative location 12 so this 12 will be replacing the blank in instruction a so the instruction becomes a1 comma 12 0 comma 15 similarly at location 8 at relative location 8 the instruction is st1 blank 0 comma 15 now this blank corresponds to what in the source program we can see that st uses 1 comma temp and at the end of the source program we could see that this temp value this temp is a name which tells us to reserve a value at relative location 20 so the st instruction will be using the location 20 in place of temp so the instruction will become st 1 comma 20 0 comma 15 right so these are the steps in pass 2 these are the steps in the second pass so the final form is on the extreme left we have the source program in the middle we have the first pass we have the intermediate form after the first pass and thereafter in the extreme right we have the second pass where we have the relative address locations and the complete mnemonic instructions with the offset right okay so the functions of an assembler can be summed up in two it can generate instructions that is it can evaluate the mnemonics in the operation field to produce its equivalent machine code so it can generate the equivalent machine code for the instructions such as load store etc also it has to evaluate the subfield it has to find the value of each symbol it has to process the literals and assign their addresses like we have done in the case of in the previous case with the names 4 5 temp etc and the second thing is it has to process the pseudo op the pseudo ops will tell the assembler some specific things that the assembler needs to do in order to solve the problem like start stop etc so these are the functions of an assembler for references you can go through the book by john donovan you can go through the pdf notes in the next lecture we will work uh, in details with the two pass translation with the data structures and algorithms bye